All right, our next lesson that we have is um, Plymouth in 1620. Just like we said with Jamestown, every time I say Plymouth, you need to say 1620 because that is the date that you have to remember. So this is date two of all the dates that we have to remember. Again, there's only like five or six. Now, this is the Pur Puritans and the Pilgrims that we've talked about for Thanksgiving since you were in kindergarten. They were unhappy with the Church of England and a group of Protestants le first left England looking for religious freedom in Holland. After arriving, they were not able to have the freedom that they were looking for, and shortly after getting there, a large group left and set sail for America. So these people had very hardline views on clothing. Uh, you can see by the lady's dress right here and the child's dress, hair covered, except for just a portion. Uh, the dresses are gonna come down and cover their shoes. Um, men, you'd wanna have, you'd have to be dressed like this. We also get the, the old image of a guy wearing a belt buckle on his hat. Uh, they had hardcore, hardcore religious views as well that, you know, if you weren't in church on Sunday, you'd be sent uh, to the stocks, uh, all kinds of bad things. So they weren't a very popular group on, the, on top of that. When they landed in America or the New World, they landed in present day Massachusetts up near Boston today. And they named this first colony Plymouth. Now, due to the fact that they were a religious group, they, um, they believed that the Bible was the best way to set up their government. Every, spec, every aspect of life would be based on biblical teachings, and they committed themselves to this. To, to prove how much they were committed to everything, uh, before going ashore, the pilgrims pledged themselves to self-government by signing a document called the Mayflower Compact 1620. So Plymouth, we need to remember, and Mayflower Compact, we need to remember. These two things go hand in hand because they both happen in... 1620 and they would create their own government and set up and obey its laws it would be working a lot like our modern day governments are today and we're going to take a look at that here so it established the colony as a civil body who will elect their own pastors and leaders so you had a chance to elect somebody to represent your community inside your church which was your pastor and then the leaders that would represent all the colonies together when they all got together to make new laws those elected leaders would make laws for the colony and they would vote on and follow. And as long as they were just and equal and balanced out with what the Bible had to say. The colonists elected a governor every year to rule over all the different communities. William Bradford was elected 30 times. Man, he was probably a pretty good guy to be ruled by. And every time it was by a unanimous vote. Electing officials and voting on laws was based on majority rules. So it's kind of like what we have today where if 50% of the people want something, that means half and half. Uh, but if somebody, if we have 51 or 52%, a majority has set the rule and we go by that. Finally, the lasting results from the Plymouth in 1620 with the Mayflower Compact is established this idea of self-government means you didn't have to rely on the king anymore, that you would be able to do things your own self and majority rule, that the majority of the people would have the say in what's going on. They had a type of social contract where all people agree on the laws and the government. So everybody agree to agree on this. They formed a political power, a political body with power to enact laws for the good of the colony. It wasn't just one group of people did something that they wanted it had to be good for every single person there and it provided a model for later development of representative governments basically they established a precedent that everybody else would want to set up a representative government just like they did in Plymouth so finish taking your notes and be prepared for your summary statements